Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric and today I watched WWE Monday Night Raw episode 1389. We're getting real close to episode 1400. That's pretty impressive. Um, this is broadcast on January 6, 2020. But before I get to that, I want to talk briefly about a film that I saw earlier this afternoon called The Grudge. This is the brand new grudge film. I thought I thought that, that that they already remade this this Japanese film series uh for American audiences. Um and they did. And as it turns out this is a sequel which isn't confusing at all for it to have the same name as the first movie that it's a sequel to, but that all that aside, I have not seen any of the other grudge films. Um, so I, I, I feel like I maybe would have liked this more or be able to evaluate how effective this film was better. Um, if I had seen the other films, um, there are some cool ideas in here. Um, it was, uh, it was certainly made well, as far as, uh, the production quality of it and the performances, the sound, all of it, I thought was really well done. Um, I, would only really question uh the the really the story and the story structure um is the main thing that i i didn't enjoy uh about as much as the rest so um yeah it's it's i think it's worth checking out if you're into some scary movies you're you're you're, you're um you're uh looking for some scary movies here in the in january and uh because this is kind of a weird time for scary movies to come out anyway um because we're coming out of uh, all of the big holiday now now we have the holiday blockbuster type of season um with star wars and, and friends but um yeah yeah i i thought it was all right um but uh if if you have a subscription type of service, this is def definitely worth checking out if you like it. Um, if you're uh, if you're going like at prime time, all that, I'd say it, pro it maybe isn't worth seeing um, full ticket price. Maybe go during a matinee or something like that. But but yeah, also because it's oh, it's only an hour and thirty four minutes. Um, although it did feel a lot longer than that. So there's there's three stories basically and they're all like kind of informing the the quote-unquote present day story or the furthest into the present story it's like in 2004 2005 2006 or when all the parts of the story are taking place and it's a it's not a reboot of the first three american movies in this series it's a side quill a side quill so it, it's it's like lion king one and a half <laughs> that we're seeing what else is going on like as a result of like the first movie i think but um yeah i don't, I don't know it's it's all right it, it seemed like a lot that was packed in there and yet it was only an hour and a half um for how like for that type of story structure it's i i, I don't know i'm not really sure what to think of it um it it felt a lot longer than an hour and a half. I'll I'll just say that much. But um but yeah, I I I, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about Raw. Um first we have uh Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out. Oh, before that, we have a recap of the the Lana and Lashley wedding from last week. Uh, then we have the opening title music, and then uh, Brock and uh, Brock and Paul come out. Um, Paul says that nobody is worthy, and he says, "Don't boo Brock, Le Brock Lesnar. Uh, this is unprecedented. The uh, Brock Lesnar is going to enter the Royal Rumble, um, and he's going to enter at number one. So he's going to fight everybody. Uh, but was, there's no mention of the titles, so I I don't think the title is on the line in the Royal Rumble match." Um, I think it's just Brock wanting to, to prove that nobody is worthy of fighting him, I guess. So what will happen? Well, Brock has got to be eliminated then. 
<laughs> so what will happen? <coughs> what will happen if Brock wins the Royal Rumble? Uh, does that mean he gets to choose his own opponent at WrestleMania? Does that mean he has to fight himself somehow? Does he have to uh, d- wage battle in a house of mirrors? Um, I don't know. We'll see how there's still a couple more weeks for all of this to unfold. So we'll see what happens. Um, then we had the United States Championship match, Andrade versus Rey Mysterio. Andrade, the current U.S. champion. Um, at one point, Rey sends uh, Andrade face first into the steps. That looked pretty painful, but I... Um, yeah, I thought I thought that was the most exciting moment of the match. Um, Rey Mysterio got a, a, a pin, a three count pin, uh, and the referee called the bell rang and everything. But as the bell was ringing, uh, John Cohen, the referee, noticed that uh, Andrade's foot was on the ropes, and his foot was on the ropes because Zelina put put the foot there, and so um, he didn't see that part of it. But he restarted the match. And uh, let's see, uh, Andrade flung Ray into into Zelina, um, and that like knocked her over. She was out, and uh, he was like really really worried about it. He felt awful, and he kept trying to to like check on her. But uh, as he was distracted by that, uh, uh, Andrade got him into a hammerlock DDT, uh, pinned him. And then stole his mask. He gives the mask to Vega, who seems to be pretty, some mostly okay. Uh, but he helps her back up the ramp. And uh, then later on, uh, as they're being interviewed, Rey Mysterio attacks them. He uh, beats the crap out of Andrade, takes his mask back, and also steals the United States Championship. So he has the United States Championship currently. I, I don't remember him following up on it uh after after that point in this in the entire rest of the episode so i assume he just left the building took off uh for home and we'll see it we'll see him next week maybe or maybe never again this is the last we saw of Rey mysterio as he stole the united states championship oh 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 that's why okay there's been word going around that there's a new united states championship and this is like the perfect reason to bring that out. It's like, oh, it's fine that he stole it because this is the actual United States Championship anyway. So there you go. Um, Samoa Joe has a guy in mind for their three-on-three match. Him, Kevin Owens, and somebody else versus Seth and the Authors of Pain. And then Seth, he uh, he declares that the WWE WWE universe has made him the chosen one, and so that he is the Messiah of Monday Night or Monday Night Messiah is what they're calling him by the end of the episode, and um, the abbreviation of that is M and M. So I expect to see many many uh, promos with him and the AOP uh, squabbling about having candy centers. And interviewing the guy with the pretzel in the center, and also the the sexy green M and M, which would obviously be Becky. Um, it's just a coincidence that the green M M&M, and M that the the the, the girl M M&M and M is green, and that's uh, the traditional color for Irish. The Irish folks um, with the um, uh, St. Patrick's Day and all that, but anyway. <laughs> Um, we then had the uh, tag team title, Triple Threat, Street Profits versus the OC versus the Viking Raiders. Uh, the Viking Raiders retained their championship when Ivar pinned Carl Anderson, while everybody else is kind of taken out on the outside of the ring. Um, <clears throat> Kevin Owens follows Joe to a backstage area uh, so that Ke- Kevin can see who the third man is. Uh, Charlie follows them, and Kevin's like, why is she following us? Uh, the camera also follows, but uh, Kevin goes into a room we don't see inside, um, and he comes out, and he's very pleased. Uh, Becky comes out. Uh, she says, maybe I should avoid the woman who I can't seem to beat. Asuka comes out, and uh, she she calls her Baka, 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 uh, moron. And then Becky, uh, as as Asuka is still like kind of messing 
messing with some uh, wardrobe stuff. Uh, Becky punches her in the face, lays her out, and then we go to commercial. Uh, backstage, Mojo Raleigh asks very nicely if he can see what's inside the cage that uh, Eric Rowan has been carrying around. Um, and Rowan says, you know what? Sure, go ahead, but don't tell anybody. Mojo looks inside and is terrified. He starts shrieking and and yeah, and that at that point that's when we have the Ray attacking Andrade uh interview. Um and then we go back to the ring. Rowan destroys a local guy and he says, "Hey, do you want to see what's in the cage?" And the guy's like, "No, no, 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 no." And he forces him to look in the cage. And uh, he like puts puts the cover over his head, and his face is covered in blood. Is it his own blood? Is it the thing in the cage's blood? I don't know. I think the thing in the cage might be one of the creatures from Bird Box, or it's the zombified head of Luke Harper to explain his disappearance. Uh, that Eric Rowan killed his former tag team partner. And turned him into a zombie so he could put it in a cage and have a friend with him all the time. Maybe that. Or maybe it's uh isn't there a isn't there a snake that shoots blood out of its eyes? I'm gonna look that up because I think that's a thing. Is okay. Okay, it's not a snake, it's the horned lizard. It's this is okay, i this has to be what it is. Except a horned lizard wouldn't freak freaks freak somebody out like mojo raleigh it has to be more horrifying than that but if it's an animal it, it's got to be this because it can shoot blood out of its eyes and that would explain um the guy getting blood on his face unless it's in unless it's his own blood but he was like rubbing his eyes like it got into his eyes <laughs> i i don't know i'm sure we'll get more <laughs> going on with that next week but anyway, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where did I leave off in my notes here? AJ Styles fought Akira Tozawa. Uh, he could have defeated him in like a minute, uh, but he decided to taunt Randy Orton instead. So uh, he was about to get set up for the Styles Clash. Um, his initial win could, would have come after a uh, phenomenal forearm. But uh, instead of the Styles Clash, he gets... Uh, he gets Akira set up into the for that draping DDT, and then he does uh, the whole uh, sh- the the RKO setup shtick with the you know spinning around, pounding on the mat, all of that. Hits him with an RKO and does the the arm thing um, in the corner. And then as he's walking up the ramp, we see in the ring a man in a gray suit gets taken down by security as he's trying to get into the ring. And we cut to the camera that's on those guys. And then we go to commercial real quick. It's like, wait, what was that? Was that a a very well-dressed fan running into the ring? We come back from break. uh, Bobby Lashley and Lana uh, make their entrance. And the minister from last week is in the ring. He was the one who was getting into the ring before the commercial break. And uh, it seems like security thought that he was not supposed to be there. Which is kind, which is pretty hilarious, from an already like just ridiculous everything that's happening with Lana and Lashley, and then this is also part of it. I don't know. And then oh, another idea I had um, for what's in Rowan's ha- Rowan's cage is it's a uh, it's a it's a little screen that's constantly playing clips of the Lana and Lashley segments from the past several months. And I think that would absolutely terrify anybody, um, including Mojo Raleigh. But um, anyway, uh, they, they officially get married very quickly. No pomp and circumstance, all of that. Um, <clears throat> and then Rusev from Rusev Day comes on the screen he's at the beach and uh he prepared a a special wedding album album for the happy newlyweds uh with all the highlights from last week and uh and bobby uh challenges rusev 
but he does this after okay so so lana is like screeching at him like i hate you so much blah 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 and bobby tells her to shut up and then says next week fight me and i'll strip whatever balls you have left and shove them down your throat which is pretty much what they're doing to us with this story <laughs> but um yeah we'll have a, a match next week and i was this whole like during this whole thing i was like where where's where's Liv? We get no follow-up with Liv. And we have an interview backstage with R-Truth and uh, and in comes Liv Morgan. And she says, I heard that Rusev is going to have a match against Bobby and that Lana is going to be in her corner, so I'm going to be in Rusev's corner. And now I'm pretty happy about that. So uh, we'll see what happens with all that next week. Then we had Charlotte Flair versus Sarah Logan. <laughs> Where Sarah Logan stole Charlotte's uh, 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 robe. Oh, I messed that up. It was like stomping on it, tearing it up, but Charlotte came back. And uh, and beat up Sarah Logan. Uh, and the, the match never actually been, uh, started happening. Okay, <laughs> I wish I didn't mess up the the middle part there. I could do, I could fix it, but I'm not going to do that. Anyway, that was my little song for the for this week. Uh, that's part of my goal is to uh, add a little bit more music every episode, or not. That's my little song for this week. That's my little, little song for this episode. Um, so by the time by the end of this year, like I'll just be playing music all over the place. I won't have to. I won't even stop like talking while i'm playing the music and all that and it should be fun maybe i don't know if you hate it let me know and i'll keep on doing it probably until it gets better uh no way jose fights drew mcintyre drew mcintyre kills most of the conga line and then he destroys jo uh no way jose um also the way he threw his jacket vest whatever his garment is called was like super majestic he just like i'm like acting it out and he can't see me so it doesn't matter but uh, that was pretty great. Um, and he gave a countdown to the Claymore. Three, two, one, boom. And then he says, who dares me to, to do one more Claymore? And everybody says, yeah, kind of. I don't know. Maybe they, maybe nobody was saying that they dare him. Um, and so he, he counts down again, uh, hits Noe Jose with another Claymore, and announces that he's going to be in the Royal Rumble because he hasn't had a championship match yet. And that is criminal that uh, he hasn't had that opportunity. And I agree. I really hope that Drew McIntyre wins the Royal Rumble and challenges Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. That would be awesome. Um, I think that would be a lot more. That would be a, a lot better match to have set. Because we're not going to see Brock Lesnar do anything between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. Like, let's be honest. He's not going to have any matches between those two uh, those two pay-per-views. There's only one pay-per-view in between those anyway. Um, I think there's a lot more, uh, there's a lot more to p to potential for the build over those two months with, um, uh, with uh, Bray Wyatt whoever is going to fight him probably Roman Reigns, but, um, I, that will be, a, that would be a lot more interesting for that to get built up to. Um, and we're, it looks, it seems like right now we're a lot further away from that anyway. Whereas with Brock Lesnar, we haven't seen him since survivor series until tonight. And why not have that set up right, right here in a couple of weeks because that I, and that match would be awesome anyway. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Drew McIntyre, he, uh, he said there can be only three, two, one. The, his, his countdown is the thing now, and I'm way into it. The Claymore countdown, sign me up. That, is that, is that going to be a shirt? It, he's the three, two, one kid. 
or something. I don't know. There's all kinds of things you could, all kinds of directions you could go with that. But also, we'll all be thinking of him every time we count three, two, one during the Royal Rumble. So that is also pretty genius. Um, or at least I'm going to be thinking of him every time, and I'm going to be reminding everybody else that's around me. I'll be like, "Hey, hey, three, two, one is coming up again. Maybe it's Drew McIntyre. Maybe it's Drew McIntyre." Um, although I think it would be really, really, really funny if, uh, Brock Lesnar enters number one and then whoever is number two just eliminates him immediately. Um, kind of like a, the, the Goldberg squash match, uh, their first meeting, like how that, that was pretty funny. So maybe, maybe that'll happen. I don't, <laughs> there's a lot of things with the title, not on the line that could absolutely happen. So, uh, up next, we had Aleister Black versus Shelton Benjamin. So, every time somebody had a match, that eliminated them from the running for being uh, Kevin Owens and Joe's uh, tag team partner for the main event. So, it wasn't Aleister Black. It wasn't Shelton Benjamin. And then, after Aleister defeated Shelton Benjamin, uh, Buddy Murphy came out and attacked. He he really beat the crap out of Aleister. Um, and he was, like... <laughs> Just sitting there on the barricade after destroying him, pretty, uh, pretty solid, uh, pretty solid move there, uh, pretty solid gloating by Buddy Murphy. Um, so none of them could be the the third member. Um, I was thinking it'd be really cool if it was if it was Edge, who uh, made a surprise return. The place would go crazy. Um, and then I also suggested, uh, uh, I was mostly chatting to Matt during all this, uh, my main suggestion, or I'd say my, my boldest suggestion was that it was an actual gorilla that Samoa Joe had found a gorilla from the local zoo and that Kevin was so pleased because he is a known zoo fan and probably had met that gorilla earlier that day as well. But it was not. Uh, so Seth came out with uh, the AOP, and uh, he tells everybody, I know what's best for you, and that's to eliminate people like Kevin Owens and Joe and whoever they found to be their partner, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so Kevin comes out, Joe comes out, and their partner comes out. Well, this is a big show. And uh, so they're, uh, the, the match happens. Um, Seth and the AOP are disqualified when Seth hits the Big Show with a chair, and then uh, Big Show uh, hits the KO punch on Seth, uh, knocks him out. Um, AOP uh, pull him to safety, and uh, the Kevin Jones show, which is has to be the name of this team, stands tall at the end of the night and then we get a very very quick rundown of all the stuff that's going to happen next week and uh and there is a lot that's going to happen next week we're getting a rematch of this six uh three on three uh but they didn't even have time to add big show to the graphics he must not have an up-to-date image for them to use um but they're going to be in a six man's fist fight Whatever that means, we'll find out next week. They, no, I, I'm sure they found out about that right then, and they're like, "I don't know what that is." And Jerry Lawler's like, "What is that? I don't know." Um, there's not enough time to talk about it. I was already have enough time getting done with all this at the end anyway. Um, what else happens next week? We have um, AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. I think is happening next week. No Randy Orton appearances this week. Um, that was a little bit. I'm, I was a little bit disappointing. Uh, I was expecting RKO out of nowhere when that thing with the minister happened with security taking him down. I thought that was something to do with the 24/7 championship or something with Randy Orton. Like, I, but why he was so off target? AJ was already way up the ramp. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but that's not what happened. So it doesn't matter if I know why that would happen. Um, <clears throat> what else is, oh, uh, Rusa versus Lashley with Liv and Lana at ringside. Uh, they're definitely going to fight each, like get into some squabbles with each other during that. Um, what else was announced for next week? That's all I can remember. Um, 
but uh yeah i'll definitely be watching again next week uh but i am very very excited for nxt this week because we have two i think there's two first round matches for the dusty classic um that should be awesome one of them is imperium versus forgotten sons and then the other i think that's one of them um and then the other for sure is gallus versus um the undisputed era um so that should be great um and i don't i don't know if anything else has been announced for uh for nxt this week i don't know but um yeah so that is it for raw 13189 and the grudge 2020 uh let me know what you thought about either of those things by tweeting me at tiw podcast go to tiwpodcast.com for more reviews if you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site please share some links with your friends subscribe on itunes spotify stitcher youtube wherever you like to listen stay safe out there in all the infinite multiverses and i'll see you next time here on tiw podcasts bye